Kolobororo mi koni gbe Iya fun we lo ba mi ko mani shofo Olorun o ti tochi sure fun mi o Kolobororo mi koni gbe Mi mo re oba ugo Mi mo re oba eda mi mo re oba ugo ugo mi mo re oba ugo my brothers and my sisters welcome welcome to another lovely episode of simplified before i continue i'm going to say this quick irregardless of your religion irregardless of how you choose to communicate with your creator this message is for you please don't log off please don't click off Let's do this together. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And I urge you to please, 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 if you have not already done so, click that button and subscribe. We need you. We need your subscription. All this while we're still stuck on 130 something subscribers. We can do better than that. So please, I urge you, please, 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 subscribe, like, and don't forget to share. Thank you. May God bless you. My brothers and my sisters, I greet you in the most beautiful greeting in the world. The green of peace, the green of the pious, the green of salam. May the peace and blessings of Almighty God be with you, guide you, and always and always show up for you. Amen. Uh, today's message is very, very simple. And as I think it's simple, May Allah make it easy for me to convey and may Almighty God, Ya Allah, make it easy for you to hear, understand, and digest. What is the benefit of being good? What does it do for us to be good, to be kind, to be sharing, to be giving, to be caring? What does it actually do for us you know, when we give to somebody, we're actually blessing that person. But what is in it for us? What is in it for us? My sister, please be ready to give us. There's a lovely surah in the Holy Quran, uh, Surah to Rahman. And Surah to Rahman is Quran chapter 55. My sister, can you please give me Surah Rahman, Quran chapter 55? Give me the verse verse 60 of the 51 i mean bismillah i mean this is quran chapter 55 verse 60 is there any reward for good other than good period that is a direct message from your creator is there any other reward for good other than good is there any other reward for good other than good? And when you do good for somebody, guess who owes you? The only person that will never deny you of your reward is the only one that owes you. Not the person that you showed your kindness to, not the person you give to, but your creator. And that will take me to... Hmm. A lovely story about a beautiful, beautiful prophet. A prophet of God that we seldomly speak of. And this prophet of, this prophet of God, there is one prayer that everybody say. We say, what a final, mankana aliyah. That prayer was actually dedicated to a prophet. But before I speak about that prophet and tell us the surah in the Quran, let me take you through this little tour, the mental tour. When God is ready to bless you, and you know simplifiers, we say God begins with the end in mind, right? God wants to bless you, but you have to be ready for the blessing. But how does he know that you are ready for that blessing? You know, if you go to a, uh, uh, orange tree or peach tree 
and you want to pluck an orange. You check them, you look, look, look and see. Is it ripe? Is it ripe? No, that one is not ripe. You look at the next one. Is it ripe? Is it ripe? No, it's not ripe. You look at the next one until you find a golden orange and then soft tender and you're like, yep, it's ready. That's when you pluck that and that's when you eat and you enjoy it. The same thing go for all of us with Almighty God. When God is ready to bless you, the blessing is ready. Matter of fact, that blessing is at your door. And the angels that are the bearer of that blessing, they come to your door, but they don't come in. They wait. They wait until Allah says they can come in. However, one person comes in, knocks your door, and say, Alaji, or Alaja, or Uncle, whatever your title is. And that person tables all their needs. And now the person needs maybe 100 naira, or maybe 10 pounds, or maybe $10, or 15 riyadh, looking at different currencies. And you know in your pocket that you have, you don't have a lot of money, but you have enough beyond that person's request. And in your mind, you're thinking, if I give it to him now, I know we already, I already fed my family breakfast and lunch. And we already have hope for our dinner. But this person does, hasn't even had breakfast. So you think in your mind, um, I'm sorry, I don't have enough right now. Maybe next time. And the person says, okay, thank you. And the person walks away. When Allah asks your angels, the angels at your door, is it ready for the favor that you, you come bearing? You know what the angels will say? He's not ready. My brother, remember, nothing goes for nothing. You want a multitude, you have to give something. And the, the expediter of your favor is connected to your arms giving and your heart and your charitable ability. Well, charitability. God is grooming you for that favor. God is grooming you. He's trying to be sure that you're ready. You have to be ready. You have to give something to get something. Nothing is free. You know, there is a song in my language, in Yoruba language. We say, Alubari Kalongwa. Alubari Kalongwa. Nawo nawo ki maishapa. Alubari ka. Longwa. Um, spending. The spenders, in the way of God, they have a mission. They're not careless spenders. They're spending to get something from God. And see, some people are already smart beyond us. They know when you want something from God, do for little people. No matter how big we are, you remember simplifiers? We say this, no matter how big you are, somebody is bigger than you. No matter how smart you are, somebody is smarter than you. And no matter how poor you think you are, somebody is poorer. So, some people are already smart. They're already multi-tawai or multi kojawa. They know, if I want something from God, I got to give something. How do you think let me go back to the story. The mental tour. Another person will come to you the following day or the following week and ask you for something again, another favor. Please, uh, we don't have any food in our house. And I know if I come to you, I may get help. Anything, anything you can give us is good enough. And you feel sorry for that person. And you feel pity. Because you know them and you know their need is genuine. And you go to your kitchen. And you go to your pantry. And you give them maybe three cups of rice. 
or you go to your purse and you give them some amount of money that will quench their thirst or that will fill their belly and you give. And Allah will send the signal again to your angels that have been standing at your door. And Allah will ask them, is he ready or is she ready? And the angels will say, I think so, we think so. Now, this is one thing you don't know. When you do alms giving to all the donors of Simplified Heart, to all our benefactors, you have no idea how much you have sown, how much acts of kindness, how much goodness you have sown. And the promise of Allah will come to fruition in your lives. Because the angels will tell God that you are ready for your return. And that's when Allah, this is not a door that you unlock for them. This is a door that your act of kindness, act of giving, your charitability, your love, your kindness. This is a door that all those characters or character, characteristics will unlock that door. And then the angels come in. And all of a sudden, that contract you've been bidding for, you get an email that you, they have chosen you. That promotion that you have been seeking, you get a message the next day you go to work that you got that promotion. That job you've been applying for, that fruit of the womb you've been crying to Allah for, and then your wife will tell you, honey, we have two lines on the stick. You're going to be a daddy. My sisters, my brothers, the number one thing that can unlock your favor, your blessing, is alms giving. My sister, I want you to be ready to give us this verse in the Holy Quran. And that is the Surah Tul Miriam. And this story in the Holy Quran is going to speak of a lovely, lovely, lovely prophet. Anabi Idris, Ali Salatu Wasalam. And in the Bible, I think he's called Enoch. Idris in the Quran. My sister, can you please go to Quran chapter 19, Surah Al Maryam? Can you please give me uh, the verse? You can start from verse 54. Bismillah. I was civil and in the regime. I mean, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I mean, this is chapter 19, verse 54. Mm -hmm. Also mentioned in the book, the story of Ishmael. He was strictly true to what he promised, and he was a messenger and a prophet. He used to enjoin on his people prayer and charity. Stop right there, my sister. Look at the two characters of Anabi Ishmael that I mentioned there. He enjoined, is true to his promises. Meaning when you make promises to people, fulfill your promises. Second thing, he enjoined his people in prayer. My friends, my families, when I send you simplified videos, it's not because of any other reason other than my emulation of these prophets. I'm reminding you, all simplifiers, all power our sisters and brothers. I'm reminding you the words of God. I'm calling you back to the ways of God. And an, another thing that Allah mentioned about this prophet is his charitability. He enjoined his people in prayer and charity. And he was most acceptable in the sight of his Lord. For those two reasons, prayer and charity. That is Anabi Ishmael. My sister, can you please go to 55 for me? He used to enjoin on his people prayer and charity. Thank and you. And he was most acceptable in the sight of his Lord. Thank you. Now give me, and that is Anabi Ishmael, give me this 56. Also mentioned in the book, The Case of Idris, he was a man of truth and sincerity and a prophet. And we raised him to a lofty station. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> we raised him to the highest heights. Warafanahu, Mankana, Aliyah, 
Allah Akbar. That is Anabi Idris. Now let me tell you this quick story about this lovely, 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 lovely prophet. You ready? Let's go. So this prophet, every night, he does tahajjud. Tahajjud, in Islam we call it tahajjud. Christians, they call it night vigil in English. Praying in the middle of the night when everybody else is sleeping. And his prayers was also about two reasons, two things, two prayer requests. The first request, the first of his requests was everlasting Allah, show me thy mercy. He was asking for God's mercy. And the second prayer point was for Allah to bless Asarael, the angel of death. Because he's, you know, he was a prophet, intelligent. When old things go, then new things come. Out with the old, in with the new. And who is facilitating that for God? That was the angel of death. So this prophet was praying fervently for Israel, for the angel of death. And be a coup. For people that don't know, angel of death was is also an angel of God. The same way there is prophet, I'm uh, sorry, there is angel, Malaka Jibril. There's also a Sarailu, angel of death. Now, to cut the long story short, every time this prophet prays for a Sarail, Allah elevates him in rank. Every time he prays, Allah elevates him in rank. He didn't know why Allah kept elevating him above some angels. So one day he went to God and he said, Ya Allah, I don't think I'm this good to you. I don't think my work is this good. I don't think I merit this much favor from you. But you kept elevating me. What have I done differently? And Allah says it's not what you did. <laughs> it's a prophet of, it's a prayer of one human being. There has been, there has been the catalyst for your promotion. I'm going to stop right there for a second. You think you can be that good for your Allah to answer your prayers that easily, that quickly, and for Allah to bless you that well? It's because when you do good, you know, Allah says there are some people that he will never turn away their prayers. People that you have blessed, when they pray for you, there is not a single veil. Look how light this is. So you can still see me, right? Nothing, not even a veil as light as cotton feather will be in the middle of me in that prayer. So do enough acts of kindness because people that you bless, they're there to pray for you. And those are the prayers Allah said, I will never turn away. So while you are sleeping at night, angels are praying for you because somebody stay up, pray for you, thanking God, blessing the name of God because of your favor, because of your act of kindness. So Asarayo went to Allah and made that inquiry. And Allah said, it's not you. It's not something special that you did. And the prayers Allah said, I will never turn away. So while you are sleeping at night, angels are praying for you because somebody stay up, pray for you, thanking God, blessing the name of God because of your favor, because of your act of kindness. So Asherah Asarayel went to Allah and made that inquiry. And Allah said, it's not you. It's not something special that you did. It was the prayer of a third party that elevated you. And he realized it was Prophet Idris that has been praying for him. So he went to visit Anabi Idris. And for people that, that probably don't know, you will pray to see angels. If you see one angel, the only one angel you can see is the angel of death. And once we see it, there's no turning back. We're not coming back from that. So, but this prophet... Because of his prayers, night vigils, he merited that. Angel of death came 
and said, I just want to come and thank you for what you have done for me. I'm so high in rank because of your act of kindness. I come to say thank you. And if there's anything you ever need, please let me know. As I was about to leave, Anna Bidri said, oh, actually, there is one thing that I would like you to do for me. And I'll be, Asarel said, anything, what can I do for you? He said, I want you to kill me. I want to taste death. I want to see what it feels like. <laughs> Asarel said, I cannot kill you without the permission of Allah. I don't just kill people. And prophet says, then Allah will give you permission to kill me. Asarel asked Allah, Allah says, go ahead, kill him, take his life. Therefore, he killed the prophet, Anabi Idris. So Anabi Idris told him, now I'm ready to go back, wake me up. He said, no, 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 I don't have that power. I don't have the power to wake you. Ah, Anabi Idris said, but it's not my time to die. Israel said, I know, but like I told you, I cannot do anything without the kun fire kun of Allah. And my job is only to kill. I don't have the power to wake up. But Allah, in his mercy, woke Anabi Idris. Ali salatu wa salam. So now, Anabi Asara was about to leave. The angel of death was about to leave. Ishmael said, actually, there is one more thing I would like you to do for me. He said, what is it? He said, you know, I've been hearing about eh, the, the, the Aljana. I've been hearing about the paradise. And I know you can take me there. I would like a snake pick of Aljana. And Asarahil, the angel of death, said, no, 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 no. I can't do that. I have to get Allah's permission. He got Allah's permission. Allah said, okay, take him. He just want to see let him see. Remember, Allah begins with the end in mind. What a final humankana aliyah. We raise them in highest rank, right? This is the meaning of that prayer. For people that didn't know, now you know from simplified, directly from the Holy Quran. So Allah gave permission to the angel of death. Anabi Idris climbed on his, on his wing. He flew, flew him to Alijanna. Mm. And Abidri saw the place. Oh my God, this is beauty beyond comprehension. He said, yeah, it's beautiful. Now it's time to go back. And Abidri said, I don't think so. There is no way that I will see this. And then go back to, to the world, go back to earth. There is no way I will ever do that. This is too beautiful. Ah, Anabi Asarahil was like, oh my God, I hope I didn't make a mistake. Asarahil went back to Allah and said, Ya Allah, your prophet that you asked me, give me permission to take to Ali Jannah. No, I cut a little bit. So he said to, he said to the prophet Idris, he said, you cannot stay. The only way you can even look really is if you become a bird or a flying eagle or something. That's when you can actually see. So when Anabi Idris said, then turn me to a bird. I really want to see the whole thing. And Anabi Idris became a bird. And after I became a bird, Asarahi was telling him, let's go back. My prophet said, I'm not going back. <laughs> so Asarahi, the angel of death went back to Allah. I said, your prophet is refusing to go back. Allah says, I already know he's going to say that. I knew everything he was doing, I knew this is where he was leading to. And Allah says, we keep our promises. What a final woman, Kana Aliyah. We have elevated him to the highest height. Mentioned in the book, or uh, uh, the case of Idris, he was a man of truth and sincere a prophet, and we raise them to a lofty height, to the highest 
height. So, as it was, the first person that's supposed to enter Ali Jannah supposed to be Anabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, the only way Anabi Idris could be there was in a different form and shape. So he was there as a bird and he's still there up till now. Not as a human being, not as a prophet, but as the form that he took. Now, the reason for all the story that I'm telling you is somebody else's prayer was causing elevation for Asara Hill. Imagine, my beloved simplifiers, how many people are praying for you just because you donated something. Do you know how many food drives we did in Nigeria during Ramadan? Sorry, before Ramadan, during Ramadan, some iftars, during La Lato Lakodri, after Ramadan, and also during the uh, Eid. And we're looking by the grace of Allah to do more. And even outside of the, f the food drives that we do, we do almsgiving to orphans, to students. We give child, we give uh, scholarships, we give charity donations to orphans, to motherless kids, to widows, to widows, all because of you. And if you hear the feedbacks we got for you, your mind will be blown. The prayers that these people say for you. While you are sleeping, they are there praying for you, for Allah to bless you and prolong your life and give you good health and keep you in the day, all the good prayers. You think you are alive and you are wealthy and you are rich and you are healthy and you are sustained only because of your prayers or because you are good enough? No, my brother. It's because there are somebody somewhere, some people somewhere, praying for you. And the prayers of the people you help will be like a catalyst, like an accelerator, a gas pedal that fast track your own prayers to the throne of God. My brothers and my sisters, I'm going to say this to you. And I'm praying to God to give me 10 donors to give simplified 10, 11 donors. The, the benefactors that will say, Buki, anytime you're doing fundraising, call us individually. Call me. You can count on my donation. I've been praying to Allah for that. And my brothers, my sisters, if you would like to be that, anonymous donor for Allah, please email us. Please email us. Our email is below. Please reach out to us. We need you because we're getting the needs. We're getting the request. We get requests for building water wells in Africa. We get requests for helping some churches, some mosques, some orphanages, some widows, we're getting all these requests, but we have limited donors. My brothers and my sisters, together by the power vested in you, we can do it. And I bet you, Allah is the only recipient of your kindness that will never deny you your reward. And I pray by the power, by the love, by the favor, and mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon Anabi Idris, Prophet Idris, Prophet Enoch. I pray by that, that Allah blesses you beyond your wildest imagination. And as you make, you give us the peace of mind to call you whenever we need donation. Every time you call, call Allah, may Allah answer your calls. What a fan of Makana Aliya. What a fan of Makana Aliya. What a fan of Makana Aliya. Everything I say that is good. All glory and adoration to Almighty God, the King of all kings, the all Lord of all lords, the Immaculate, the Everlasting God. And everything I say that is incorrect. Allah, please, please forgive me. I am just 
your perfect imperfection. My sisters, my brothers, my beloved simplifiers, un until next time, remember, I love you. But no matter how much I love you, God loves you more. And I know that you love me. But no matter how much you love me, he will always love you more. Until next time, remember, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep your heart soft and continue to be charitable, to show kindness, to show love, and to embrace the goodness of God. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mwah.